Smile. Smile. Yay. Okay. Thumbnails. Yeah. Uh, at some point, people are going to be editing these. Okay. So um, the smile is supposed to be like what's going to be on the thumbnail as like the cover for oh, it. Oh, okay. Mm. So I got Sue Nash mm -hmm. from Body Innovations. Mm -hmm. Awesome organization uh, here in town in Guelph. Thank you for doing this, Sue. You're absolutely welcome. Uh, right. It was very serendipitous. We had yeah. it scheduled to do it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure how, but I got uh, double schedule conflict. I'm in an EO uh, form training tomorrow, which is a really cool organization. So this which... happens to you too. I'm so glad yeah. that, that this happens to you because <laughs> this ha this is my life. This is your life. <laughs> I, I know you're always so busy. I'm when trying you... to be a better leader, but you know, like it's very difficult with all these things. Just you know, you multitask. Oh man, multitasking! What a fallacy that is. I'm a business owner. Right? I'm a wife. I'm you know a daughter and mom. Mom and yeah. Like just wear many hats. Well, and one of the things um, that I've really valued in our relationship is some of the mom stuff. Not that we're gonna get into the parent stuff, but yeah, I, yeah. I literally have a calendar reminder in my calendar <laughs> for six years from today, right? When Hunter is yeah. nine, right? To play the game where you change positions at the dining room table with yeah. your kids and pretend like you're them, yes. and they pretend like you're. But they're you. Yes. So you I can really that. start to understand yeah. how they perceive you. Yeah, how exactly. And, you know, and then they get a chance to see how you are perceiving them. It's well, so cool. Because they're playing that role too. I love so it. it's a real eye opener. And it's all done in fun, right? Like, right. There's no, no one should get angry over this. It's completely hysterically fun. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to do it. It's a lot of fun. It's six years I out. hope you enjoy it as much as <laughs> we enjoy it. I think I will. I think my hardest, the hardest thing I'm going to have to do is keep a straight face. Oh, yeah. 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 Especially you really when, get into it. Though. Especially when Hunter yeah. starts acting like me. Yeah. Like, it'll be really interesting to see what oh, that looks like. But anyway, yeah, I digress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, maybe we can just start with a quick okay. little uh, intro. My goal is to try to keep these videos under 10 minutes. Got it. We got lots of time left, eight minutes. So, just okay. a quick little story introduction of yeah. Sue Nash and Body Invasions and kind of how you got to where you are right now. Okay. Well, I've been in business 10 years. Um, Woohoo. I know. Congrats. I know. It's crazy. I didn't even consider going into business for myself. Um, it wasn't until I was 40 when I had stayed home with my kids. You know, I had two kids. And, uh, you know, one day my son said, Mom, I don't need you to volunteer in my school anymore. I was like, ugh. Oh, my heart. Stop on it. You know, you're killing me. How dare you become independent yeah. when, you know, I've raised you that way. So awesome. I was like, okay, now what am I going to do with my life? Do I go back and recertify and, and, you know, become a medical technologist and then I'm going to be working night shift and, you know, I'm like, forget, ah, that. forget that. So it was really my husband who said, you know, you really should do what you love to do and help other people um, with their health. Because when I was, um, I had a serious health problem when I was 18, I was a in a car accident where I was sitting in the back seat of a car and a drunk driver hit the car I was in and I was asleep at the time no seatbelt I was that far back you know in time yeah, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a law Crazy. and I was asleep but I kind of flew around the car and I had fractured my skull in two places up here on my right side and um, I'd lost my memory I had memory trouble for a year and I was basically a basket case. I had a concussion, um, you know, and um, all the head trauma that you have, you know. Yeah, so that's, that's just crazy. Whiplash, concussion, you name it. I had it all. And I was a basket case, you know. I was very, <laughs> up, you know, just beside myself at that young age that all this was going on and I couldn't handle it. Yeah. Um, so I actually, you know, I went away for a while. My parents had a home in Florida. I was very fortunate. and. Um, I was staying there and I started to exercise, work out, get, you know, I noticed I felt better when I moved and I got oxygen into my brain. And then I went to the university and I asked them if I could um, take a tape recorder and just, you know, edit the class with the tape recorder. So they let me do that and I would come home every day and I would write out every single word on that tape recorder longhand. Crazy. And then I would put it on cue cards and then I would memorize it. And that is how I learned to get my memory back and my confidence. Really, yeah. I had to relearn how to learn. So wow. it was, it was a process. Well, I read your story when you sent me that yeah. kind of initial part of your book. Which yeah, yep. I know you're writing still. Yeah, you're, you're, you're cause you're, you're helping me <laughs> to do that. Um, but it was really amazing to kind of yeah. go through that yeah. in such a deep 
yeah, kind of perspective. It was, it's a scary time. It was a very scary time, you know. But I ended up, you know, it took me about six years, but I ended up with a chemistry degree and a medical technology degree. <laughs> um, so I did it. And this was coming from, as a child, I, I grew up in the public school system, I had dyslexia when dyslexia wasn't even labeled as dyslexia. Right. So I had many learning disabilities. And um, I just skinned through, but skinned my nose every year. I hated school. I couldn't understand why people could learn and I couldn't learn. Right. <laughs> I was like, I just don't get it. Why do they understand it and I don't understand it? And so then to have another head injury on top of that at 18, I was just like overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, but to be able to teach myself how to learn, um, that was really, and bring my health back to a place where um, I could participate in life and, and enjoy being active and being healthy. And so it's that aspect that really, I think, you know, that was something terrible as, as a tragedy that that was, you know, a bad and for me at that time in my life. No, and I'm not saying there are many people much much worse than I sure, did. Sure, sure, sure. Like, but that was bad. But out of something terrible, something great came of that. You know, yeah. I got found a husband, and I have two wonderful kids, and I eventually led me to open my own business to help people with their health. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's so yeah, neat about your approach with body innovations yeah. is that you really kind of take a lot of lessons out of that story uh -huh. and apply them with your clients. Exactly. So maybe you can tell people a quick little synopsis, you know, 30 seconds or less, uh, what Body Innovations does and how you help people. Well, I take people, people usually come in and see me and they often don't know where to begin. They're at maybe they're under the rope, many of them, it's not all of them. And then I assess all their stresses in their, that are going on in their body and in their life. And I tell them where they need to start. Mm -hmm. And going forward, what are their goals, what are their needs, and how we're going to achieve them. So I believe in um, like 12 week goals. It right. has to be achievable for them, and they have to know where they need to start. Many people, like they're, if they're not ready to start, you know, where they think they're, you know, how do people even know where to start? People just, well, and just to, just to step back a little bit, yeah. I'm not sure if the audience really knows what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Because you're talking about your business the way you know it to be. Yes. But what is it that you're actually helping people with? Get their health back. And how do you do that? I do an assessment mm -hmm. and I show them, I give them an exercise prescription. Right. Where movement and how they're going to start moving and start and how to get healthier. Right. And so what are some of the modalities that you kind of reference and use in your everyday when you're working with your clients? Because I know you do a lot of different class stuff. You do a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. So yeah. what, what's the kind yeah. of approach? I know you do a lot of posture stuff and working Lots with people on the spine. Yep. Um, we work with a lot of biomechanics and posture. So I'm always, during an assessment, I'm going to look at the posture. And I'm going to look at range of motion in all the joints. I'm going to measure them. I'm going to um, see what falls short. And then I give the corrective, say, stretches or exercises to bring the posture into balance. And then I'm also looking at um, the fascia system. So fascia is like that, you know, internal net that's... You know, keeping everything together. Keeping everything together. So um, I'm looking at all those things as well as, uh, say, the stresses. People don't understand stress in their body, that stress is cumulative. It comes, it may be stress, biomechanic stress. So you have stress because you have a tight hamstring. Right. But it can also be you have a lousy diet. That is, you have a Crohn's. You have um, osteoporosis. You're a on many. You're issues. on many medications. These are stresses on your body. So you have to be able to know, assess all those stresses. Yeah, well, and it's something that has always stuck out to me when, when talking to you. It was many years ago, but you're like, mm -hmm. when I look at kids walking down the street, I look at them completely different. I do. You know, I, I'll, I'll look I at look at all kid. people like that. Yeah, yeah all people, right? <laughs> yeah. You see somebody that's like got a bit yeah. of a wide stance and you're like, duck totally. walk. You're like, yeah. oh, your knees and your back. Totally. <laughs> you know? So what, like, what, what's like, kind of it's stuff? Like betting on a horse. Yeah, so tell us a little bit you about know? that. What does that mean? What, what is that stuff? Well, that is all just, you know, a person has a normal gait and, you know, you carry with you a history. If you broke something in your body, I don't care if it was 20 years ago. If you did not correct that properly at that time. Which I would think very few people do. Yeah. You're going to go walking down the street and someone like myself is going to look at that and go, oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> it, they probably have back pain or knee pain or hip pain and if they don't, they're going to have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I can see it. It's going to happen. Right. If it's not there already. And the beauty thing about what you do to help people is that it does they don't have to have that pain. 
No, exactly. People often just like to live with their pain or they think they identify with their pain, right? You don't need to. Like, those things happen, you know, they're part of us, but you can do so much to help yourself. Cool. You, there's a lot you can do just to make your life so much better. Get rid of all that ugh, stuff in your life. I love it. Ugh, I love it. So when it comes to being a better leader yeah. and, and kind of keeping yourself on track, uh -huh. what kind of things do you keep in mind as like kind of leadership hacks or life hacks or, you know, words of wisdom mm. um, that you kind of live by to kind of keep you on the path to success? Ooh, on the path to success. Whatever it is I that like you do. That. <laughs> I, I well, perceive you as successful, right? Okay. Because you've been um, helping so many people and doing such a good job. In you calendar. know, my daughter saw my calendar. The, uh, she happened to be looking at my phone and my calendar. <laughs> and then she thought it was so cute because at, at 8 o'clock every morning, at the beginning of every single day, I say anything is possible. Oh, cool. And In your calendar? In my calendar. Every single day. It says at eight o'clock I get a ding and it says anything is possible and I believe that because I believe it to be true of any possibility if you think it can happen it can happen you have to make I don't care if you want to take ten steps or one little baby step today but you have to make that step no matter how big or small it is anything is possible as long as you are positive and you have that positive thought about putting it out there today that's cool that's really the way I love it because there's been so many instances because I, I really believe in the law of attraction okay. and, and not mm -hmm. from like a sexual perspective. Yeah. And, yep. I know you haven't thrown an innuendo out yet. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm really impressed. This is the first 12 minute conversation I was too so. without any references to sexuality. Yeah. So I figured I'd throw it in there, right? <laughs> okay. But the law of attraction being this yeah, idea yeah. that like if you believe it and you perceive yeah. it that it's possible, Absolutely. it is achievable. Yeah. I think Napoleon Hill has a quote that's very similar to what I just said. I heard it earlier today. I think that's okay. what I was trying to draw from. But the idea yeah. that once you have decided what you want to do yep. and why you want to do it, yep. the hows kind of present themselves exactly, and you kind of come in tune with it. Yep. And there's been a couple of very like relevant stories to that idea in my life in like the last two or three weeks and not with me. I mean, that's right. starting to happen all over the place for the last like decade of my right. life, yes. but with other yeah. people close to me yeah. who didn't necessarily understand the power of that idea right. until it started to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think just queuing yourself up on a daily basis in your own calendar yeah. was just a simple reminder that totally. anything is possible. It's the power of thought. It's beautiful. You know, everything begins with your single thought. And if it's negative, I cannot compete with you because you are, are right away putting a negative connotation on it. You will never be successful at anything. Right. You have to make it and turn it into some form of positive. Find some shred of positivity and make it positive and I can help you. I love it. So a couple things that I got from today, because we're just coming back yep. to the parking lot we started in. Yep. So the, the first one is, um, we, we, we all hear this all the time, that exercise mm -hmm. makes you feel better, but movement and, and healthy is really around understanding the stressors you're having in your life, not only from a you know, mental perspective, but also from a physiological perspective. Totally, yeah. And taking like a, a, an approach to you know, counteracting those stresses yes. so that people can become kind of healthy again in their lifestyles. Yes. Really, really big part of how you help people, which yep. is really cool. Anything is possible is something that I think mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. good for everybody to hear totally. all the time. And yeah. you can never say it enough. No. And the one thing that you didn't say, but you kind of mentioned it, yeah. was that you started your business when you were 40. And yeah. I think there's so many people out there that yeah. think it's too late. Yeah. And that they should have started their yeah. business when they were in, when they were 21. Yeah. And now that they didn't, well, they I, can't. I was really worried about that. Like, that was, that's a big jump, right? And you did it. And I did it. Yeah. And here you are. Here I am. And you're going to be you facilitating a I conference on Tuesday. Yeah, and you're amazing. <laughs> I love my life and I love what I do and that's why I do it. Cool. So. Well, thank you for doing this. You're welcome. I love there's it. A, there's a, I feel like we could probably do this for an hour. I know. Would you do another one with me? I'm sure, I'll do another one. All right, sweet. Anything you want. Cause okay. You just, have, you just put that little prompt out there and boom, I'm right there. I, and I've got so many because yeah. we've yeah. had a chance to know each other yeah. for so long. So yeah. thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya. <laughs>